Now let's take up the first question in wave optics. Which one of the following property of light does not support wave theory of light? Options A. Light obeys laws of reflection and refraction. B. Light waves get polarized. C. Light shows photoelectric effect. And D. Light shows interference. Dear students, we know that using wave theory of light and using wave front theory, you can easily explain the theories of reflection and refraction. You can also explain the phenomena such as interference, diffraction and polarization. However, in order to explain photoelectric effect, Compton effect, Zeeman effect, Stark effect, black body radiation spectrum, so on, you need to have a particle nature of light and a particle theory of light. But the wave optics does not explain or does not support these particle phenomena. Therefore, wave optics fails to explain photoelectric effect. Therefore, here the correct answer is option C that is wave optics does not support photoelectric effect. So option C is the correct answer. Let's take up the next question. X is an essential condition for coherent sources. Here X refers to options A. Constant phase difference B. Equal amplitude C. Both A and B are correct D. Both A and B are incorrect. Dear students, we know that coherency refers to or two sources are said to be coherent if they emit light continuously with a constant phase difference. If the phase difference between the two interfering waves is constant, then we say that those two sources are coherent sources. In order to see a sustained interference pattern, the condition is to have coherent sources and if the amplitudes of the interfering waves are not equal still you obtain interference pattern but if the two sources are not coherent then you don't get a sustained interference pattern and in order to call the two sources as coherent sources the phase difference between them should be a constant therefore option a is the correct answer. Now let's go to the next question. Two coherent sources of different intensities send waves which interfere. The ratio of maximum intensity to minimum intensity is 25. The intensities of the sources are in the ratio. Options A. 25 is to 1. B. 5 is to 1. C. 9 is to 4 and D 25 is to 16. It's given that the ratio of maximum to minimum intensity is 25. It's given that the ratio of maximum intensity to minimum intensity is 25. Let me write it as I max divided by I min is equal to 25. And we are supposed to find out the ratio of individual intensities that is I1 by I2 is to find out. Right, we have an expression for the maximum intensity divided by minimum intensity is given by, you can write it in terms of the amplitudes of individual sources. You can write it as A1 plus A2 whole square for maximum intensity and A1 minus A2 whole square for minimum intensity. Instead of taking A1 and A2 as individual amplitudes, you can also go for A and B. Let me make use of A and B here. So this is A plus B whole square divided by A minus B whole square where A and B are the amplitudes of individual sources. And you also know that a plus B corresponds to the maximum amplitude of the resultant wave and A minus B is the minimum amplitude of the resultant wave. And when you square amplitudes, you get intensity. 
Therefore, I max by I min is A plus B whole square divided by A minus B whole square and that is equal to 25. So when you take root on both the sides, you will get A plus B divided by A minus B is equal to 5. Cross multiply A plus B is equal to 5A minus 5B. Rearrange the terms. 4A is equal to 6B or A by B is equal to 3 by 2. 6 by 4 is 3 by 2. So what is asked is the ratio of the intensities of the individual sources. It is given by I1 by I2. You know that since I is proportional to the amplitude square, you can write it as I1 by I2 is equal to A by B the whole square. Or you can write it as A square by B square. Now A square by B square is 3 by 2 the whole square which is equal to 9 by 4 or the ratio of I1 to I2 is equal to 9 is to 4 therefore option C is the correct answer. Now have a look at the next question dear students. In Young's double slit experiment the slit widths are in the ratio 1 is to 9. The ratio of the intensities at minima to that at maxima is options A 1 is to 4, B 4 is to 1, C 1 is to 9 and D 9 is to 1. Here before you solve this you can directly come to a conclusion that the intensities at minima and the maxima will be in such a way that the ratio of intensity at minima to that at maxima should always be less than 1. That is the intensity at minima will always be less than that at maxima. Therefore you can directly eliminate options B and D because in both the options the intensity at minima is given greater than that at maxima. Therefore correct answer should be either A or C. Now in order to find the correct answer let me make use of the given data. That is the slit widths are in the ratio 1 is to 9. The ratio of slit widths let me write it as W1 divided by W2 as 1 by 9. Where W1 and W2 are the widths of the slits or the openings. And you know from basics that the intensity of the individual source is directly proportional to the width of the slit. Therefore, W1 by W2 is nothing but I1 by I2 since they are directly proportional and that is equal to 1 by 9. And what are we supposed to find out is I minimum divided by I maximum that is the ratio of intensities at minima to that at maxima. Right. Let me make use of uh, W1 by W2 once again which is equal to I1 by I2 and this can be written in terms of amplitudes. So I1 is A square divided by I2 is B square or in other words I1 by I2 is equal to A square by B square where A and B are individual amplitudes. And this is equal to 1 by 9. When you take roots, you get A by B is equal to 1 by 3. Cross multiply, B is equal to 3A. Now what do we want is the ratio of I minimum to I maximum. So I minimum divided by I maximum is equal to A minus B the whole square divided by A plus B the whole square. So A minus B is A minus 3A which is 2A whole square divided by A plus B is A plus 3A is 4A the whole square. This is 4A square by 16A square and that is equal to 1 by 4. Therefore I minimum is to I maximum is equal to 1 is to 4. So the correct answer is option A. Now let's take up an interesting question dear students. In a double slit experiment instead of taking slits of equal widths one slit is made twice as wide as the other than in the interference pattern. Options A. 
the intensity of both maxima and minima increase b the intensity of maxima increases and minima have zero intensity c the intensity of maxima decreases and that of minima increases and d the intensity of maxima decreases and minima have zero intensity the students let's first of all write an expression for the maximum intensity and minimum intensity in case of an interference pattern so for maximum intensity you write i max is equal to i i1 plus i2 plus 2 root i1 i2 and for i min minimum intensity is given by i1 plus i2 minus 2 root i1 into i2 here i max and i min are the intensities at maxima and minima respectively and i1 and i2 are the individual intensities now if i1 is equal to i2 so you can make the two individual intensities equal by keeping the widths of the individual slits equal so this can be achieved by keeping w1 equal to w2 that is when the two slits are of equal width then i1 is equal to i2 in that case you can write your i max as i1 plus i2 plus 2 root i1 i2 becomes i plus i plus 2 root i into i so that is nothing but 4i if I call the individual intensities as some i naught, then i max becomes equal to 4i naught. Then similarly, i min becomes equal to i naught plus i naught minus 2 into i naught. So 2i naught minus 2i naught becomes equal to 0. So this is a very important result that is when the two individual intensities are equal, then the intensity at maximum is four times the individual intensity whereas the intensity at the minimum or the dark fringe will be exactly zero or completely zero now what if the two slits are of unequal widths that is when w1 is not equal to w2 so it is clearly evident that when w1 is not equal to w2 i1 will not be equal to i2 now let's consider this specific case where one of the slit widths is twice the other that is w2 is equal to 2 times w1 since the width of the slit is directly proportional to intensity you can write i2 is equal to 2 times i1 and let me call that i1 as some i0 then i2 will be equal to 2 times i0 now by substituting these values in the expressions for i max and i min we get i max is equal to i0 plus 2i0 plus 2 into root of i0 into 2i0 so this is equal to 3i0 plus 2 into under root we have 2 into i naught square so which can be written as 2 root 2 times i naught when you take i naught common you get 3 plus 2 root 2 times i naught you know root 2 is 1.414 and multiplied by 2 it becomes 2.8 3 plus 2.8 is 5.8 approximately times i naught if i call this i max as i max dash so my result is i max dash that is for the case where the slit widths are unequal so in this case your i max dash is equal to 5.8 times i naught but earlier when the slit widths were equal i max was found to be 4 i naught and now it is 5.8 i naught so this is clearly greater than 4 i naught that is the result is i max dash is greater than i max so i can come to a conclusion that the intensity of maximum increases now what about minimum so let me take i minimum and i'll call it as i dash minimum the formula is given by i1 plus i2 
minus 2 root i1 i2 now substituting the values i0 plus i0 now substituting the values in place of i1 it is simply i0 plus i2 is 2i0 minus 2 times under root i0 into 2i0 so this becomes 3i0 minus 2 root 2 i0 so when i take common 3 minus 2 root 2 times i0 so 3 minus 2.8 is 0 0.2 approximately times i0 so this is i minimum dash now this is also clearly greater than i minimum because in the first case i minimum was 0 and now it is greater than 0 which is slightly greater than 0 so here finally you can come to a conclusion that when the slit widths are unequal the intensity of the maximum also increases intensity of minimum also increases so you can say that there is a different kind of contrast between bright and dark fringes so this is correctly explained in option a which says that the intensity of both maxima and minima increase therefore option a is the correct answer now let's go to the next question a beam of electron is used in an YDS experiment the slit width is d when the velocity of electron is increased then options a no interference is observed b fringe width increases c fringe width decreases d fringe width remains the same now you'll have to think what if we can achieve yds experiment using a beam of electrons yes from de broglie's principle we know that fast moving electrons do act as waves so the wavelength of moving particles is given by the de broglie wavelength that is lambda is equal to h by p which can be written as lambda is equal to h by mv so from this expression you can come to a conclusion that the wavelength is inversely proportional to the velocity of the moving particle so when the velocity of the electron is increased the wavelength decreases and what are we supposed to find out is what happens to the corresponding fringe width we have an expression for fringe width given by beta is equal to lambda d divided by small d so beta is directly proportional to wavelength so when velocity is increased that results in the decrement in the wavelength which further results in decrement in the fringe width or in other words when velocity increases wavelength decreases thus fringe width decreases therefore option c is the correct answer